بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا رحم الرحم The first chapter in this first section of the book is about one of the spiritual manners of all acts of worship including Salat it's not only for Salat actually this is the core of Ibadah and that is to be attentive to what Imam Khomeini calls Ez Rububiyyat wa Zul Ubudiyyat and he keep keeps using and repeating this as rububiyat means dignity of lordship which belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and zul ubudiyat means humility of servitude which is for us and he says one of the most important stations in a spiritual journey something by which you can measure the power of success of a wayfarer and then he says even something that perfection or imperfection of human beings depend on is this issue of he says the veil the hijab you know hijab here the, in the spiritual sense means a kind of obstacle a kind of barrier between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he says the worst the most difficult the thickest hijab or veil is khudbini wa khudparasti is to only see ourselves and to actually worship ourselves you may say how can we worship ourselves we don't you know put ourselves you know into a temple and worship no worship is not just to go to temple and worship Worship is what you worship in your life, what you want to serve in your life. Quran says, Afaraita man ilahahu hawa. Have you seen the one who has taken as his Lord his own whims and Lord desires? So, hijab khudbini wa khud parasti. Ego. The veil of seeing ourselves and worshipping ourselves is the worst hijab. And on the other hand, to penetrate through this and to get rid of this is miftahul mafati, is the key of the keys. 
So if you have this, all other keys also will, will come for getting into the ghayb, to the unseen. Or babul abwab is the gate of the gates for ascension to a spiritual perfection. So this is very fundamental. Salat is not just making wudu, having, you know, pure, clean place, clothes, clean body, and do certain things. Although these are very important, but this is just, as we said before, every time we want to say Salat, we have to check ourselves how selfish I am. How ego-centered I am. Am I able to see my problems? Am I able to accept my problems? Am I able to acknowledge great things in others, whether they are good with me or not? Salat is a laboratory to check ourselves, especially this poison of selfishness. If you want to make it simple, you can say it's selfishness, egocentrism. Because Imam Khomeini writes uh, this book for wayfarers. He says the first condition for wayfaring towards Allah is to go out of this station. This is a very, very bad station. We have to leave this station. And this is the criterion for Riyaza, true Riyaza. Uh, in the series on Maqamatul uh, Arifin from Al Isharatu wa Tanbihat, we have talked about the issue of Riyaza, a kind of self disciplining, self exercise. So he says, if the wayfarer is moving f or trying to move forward with this egocentrism is not making any progress and indeed is moving towards himself he says the main idol is our nafs Moulavi has put this in a poem he says, مادر بطها بط نفس شماست The mother of all idols is the idol of your own nafs. زن که آن بط ما رو این بط اجده هست This idol which is made from wood or sand or plaster that idol is like mar is a snack sorry a snake is a snake but idol of nafs is ejdeha is dragon compare a snake uh, sorry uh, uh, yes a snake to dragon which one is both of them are can be dangerous if it's a poisonous a snake is dangerous but compared to dragon dragon can damage a whole you know village so if we have had in the you know world catastrophic wars that thousands tens of thousands sometimes millions of people are killed sometimes because of that idol in one person which attracts other ill-hearted people M millions of people can be killed tens of millions of people can be you know losing their houses etc because of this idol of worshiping ego so this is the mother idol. 
In the Quran, there is an ayah that you are all familiar with. This is Surah Nisa, chapter 4, ayah or verse 100. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahir rahman ar-rahim. Wa man yakhruj min baytihi muhajiran ila Allahi wa rasoolih. ثُمَّ يُدْرِكُهُ الْمَوْتِ فَقَدْ وَقَعَ عَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ The one who leaves his house, his home, migrating towards Allah and his messenger, and then death comes to him, he dies. Has left the house, maybe has not reached where he wanted to reach, just for the sake of Allah has left the house, left the town seeking nearness to Allah and fulfilling his responsibility towards Rasulullah. This person فَقَدْ عَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ His reward is now upon Allah. There is reward and only Allah is able to give that reward. خب ده ظاهر the uh, outward apparent meaning of the ayah is physical migration of course with sincerity for the sake of Allah for example migrating from Mecca to Habasha or from Mecca to Medina for example this is the ظاهر which is physical, geographical journey from one location to another location with sincerity so that they can practice or better practice their religion. But there is esoteric meaning, inward meaning, and that is to migrate from ego to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, bait here then is your own nafs. And you are going away from your own nafs. He says, As long as nafs has a steel attachment to herself or to itself, and there is a steel, my, you know, ego, I am not a musafir, I am not a muhajir, I am not a wayfarer. In physical journey, you are familiar that, you know, when we are traveling, we say there is a had tarakhos Yeah, had tarakhos is much less than the distance that you need to travel so that your salat becomes qasr, becomes short, yeah? So we say when you don't see the last walls of the city or village where you live, you don't hear sort of adhan. Yeah, we say you have reached had tarakhus. So if you have intention of traveling, for example, 100 kilometers, it's not that you have to travel 100 kilometers so that your salat becomes short. When you reach had tarakhus, your salat becomes short. Okay? Had tarakhus is when you don't see the last walls and you don't hear azan if they say azan that you don't hear Ho. for a spiritual journey imam khomeini says ta baqay ananiyat dar nazar salik ast va jodran shahr khudi it's very beautiful 
و جدران شهر خودی و ازان اعلام خودخواهی مختفی نشده است در حکم حاضر است نه مسافر و مهاجر از لانگ از ایگو اگزیست این دی مایند اف ویفر اند وولز اف دی سیتی اف ایگو از ار استیل سین ویزیبل وولز and azan of declaring egoism still can be heard this person is not a wayfarer so wayfarer means when the person has managed to go certain distance away from his ego then he becomes wayfarer این مصباح الشریعه which is attributed to امام صادق علیه السلام we have a famous sentence that we have quoted in self knowledge and some other places but has an ending that is less heard that it is in مصباح الشریعه the beginning is very famous العبودیت جوهرتون کنه هر ربوبیه عبودیه servitude is a substance whose core whose essence is rububiya is lordship so ubudiya leads to worship uh, sorry lordship ubudiya leads to lordship abdi at'ani aj'al ka mathali allah says in hadith qudsi my servant obey me i will make you like an example of mine whatever i want i say be there it is i make you able to say be and then there will, will it be i am rich i will not be poor i may make you rich you will never become poor i am living i don't die i make you living never die انا غني لا افتقر اجعلك غنيا لا تفتقر انا حي لا اموت اجعلك حيا لا تموت خب سرفيتيود ليدز تو لوردشيب فما فقد من العبوديه وجد في الربوبيه وات ايفر is missing or is missed in or from servitude is found in lordship and whatever is hidden from lordship is found in servitude Imam Khomeini's explanation is this he said If you go with the step of servitude and get rid of your ego, so you bring dhul ubudiyat, humility, you have ser- humility of a servant, then you get into the realm of ezzer ubudiyat. You get close to Allah and you will get close to the honor of lordship. So, if you manage to lose in servitude your ego, you are not losing. You are actually winning something greater in lordship. To the extent that Allah becomes your hand, Allah becomes your ear, Allah becomes your tongue, your eyes, as we have in Hadith Qurb Nawafil. حتى أحبه فإذا أحببته كنت سمعه الذي يبصر يسمع به وبصره الذي يبصر به and etc يده التي يبتش بها لسانه الذي ينتق بها إن دعاني أجبته وإن سألني أعطيته beautiful حديث قرب نوافل you are familiar with so 
what we need is to migrate from ego towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Salat is the best means for this and these two cannot come together you cannot be attached to yourself and reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's like dunya and akhirah ad dunya wal akhirah varratan it means they have issue with each other uh, like you know sometimes of course it's not necessary but uh, two wives of the same person varra you know many times these two maybe have difficulty with each other but sometimes no so dunya and akhira are not getting along with each other either you go for dunya or you go for akhira if you go for akhira the beauty is that dunya may come to you at least you would have peace in dunya even if you don't have money but if you go for dunya akhira would not be achieved so he says the wayfarer should acknowledge his humility, his poverty, his nothingness, and move towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he manages to get these, then as a sir about that, then he can have a glance and see the secret in ibadah. What is secret in ibadah? Is to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To see his dignity and might. Especially in Salat, which is comprehensive. And he says, Salat, among other acts of worship, is like insan kamel we had this also last time so, salat is if you have proper salat you have proper insan and he says salat is like isma azam the greatest name of allah <coughs> and indeed it's not he says first he says it's like and then he goes further and says it is isma azam is the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he has something, please keep this in your mind. Please keep this in mind. We will talk about it inshallah later. He says, there are two acts in Salat which are very much related to our discussion. If you want to get is the ubudiyat and you know zulla ubudiyat sorry is the rububiyat and zulla ubudiyat dignity of lordship you want to get close to allah's dignity and get rid of your ego there are two acts in salat that are especially important one is wajib one is mustahab The one which is wajib is sajda. Sajda is absolutely important. Alhamdulillah, just in the last two weeks of the series on uh, practical method of self-purification, we had discussion about sajda. The late Ayatollah Shujai had beautiful discussion about sajda actually long sajda and inshallah uh, you can watch that and we will talk about it also in this book inshallah bismillah sajda is very important is watch the mustahab action which is also very important for this purpose is qunut qunut is not wajib is mustahab qunut means humbleness qanatin 
Allah says about Lady Maryam, وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الْقَانَتِينَ Those are very humble. So, Qunut and Sajda are very powerful. And inshallah we'll talk about their secrets. So, he says, if you read the Quran carefully, you see that there are things that are dependent on servitude. For example, in Surat Al-Isra, in the beginning of Surat Al-Isra, the first ayah, we say, A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajim, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Subhan Al-Ladhi Asra, بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إلى آخر الله Have you noticed that Allah says glory to the one who took in the night his servant from Masjid al-Haram in Mecca to Masjid al-Aqsa in Bayt al-Muqaddas, Jerusalem. Because Mi'raj had two parts. One was from Mecca to Masjid al-Aqsa and then from there to the skies. The one who made this journey possible is Allah but the one who was capable for this journey is introduced as Abdehi how beautiful it is we could say many things Subhanallah asra bi rasulihi bi nabiyihi bi waliyihi But said the Abdehi. This needed servitude. Rasulullah had many qualities, but his main quality is Abd. He's really a servant. Also in Tashahud, and Imam Khomeini says Tashahud is Roju as Fanaya Mutlaq. که در سجده حاصل شده این the spiritual uh, interpretation of salat when you go to sajda means you go to the maximum level of closeness to Allah by fana by self annihilation so when after the reaching level of fana you come back you have tashahud okay in the second rak'ah and fourth rak'ah or third, in the final rak'ah anyway. There is tashahud after sajda. We say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu May Allah's salutation be upon the Prophet. خب عبده even رسوله is mentioned later you don't say أشهد أن محمدا رسوله although in Adhan and Iqama we say أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله but here we want something more detailed we first bear witness that Rasulullah was Abd of Allah, was a servant of Allah and then Rasul. And actually, maybe it means that because he was Abd, a true Abd through his servitude, he was given the responsibility of Rasala. Because Abd of Allah then can deliver the message of Allah. If there is selfishness, he cannot deliver the message of Allah. This is 
a discussion that Imam Khomeini has, says has lots of other things to discuss, but we stop here. The second thing, the second chapter, our time is over, but I just mentioned so that it's in your mind. You get ready for next week, inshallah. Is about levels or ranks of wayfarers. There are many levels that we can mention for them and maybe we cannot even exhaust because if you want to be very careful maybe every person has a certain level and we have this uh, you know f famous uh, saying at uh, this seems to be a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We find it mostly in the mystical books. Sayyid Haydar Amuli in Jamiul Asrar wa Manba'ul Anwar, he quotes this from the Prophet. Lahiji in his commentary on Gulshan al Raz mentions this as a hadith and some others. But maybe we don't find it in uh, our major early collections of hadith, but it is mostly in the mystical spiritual uh, literature. Khob. This says, at Allah, the paths towards Allah are equal to the number of people. Some say other the anfus al khalaiq, some say anfas al khalaiq. If it is anfus means equal to the number of people. It is anfas means equal to the breathing, and every person can have millions of breathing. It means that for reaching Allah, there are many ways. The main way is ubudiyat. There is no other way. The main way. Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adam Allah ta'abud al-shaytan nahu lakum aduvun mubin wa an i'buduni hadha siratun mustaqim. So siratun mustaqim is one. Ubudiya. But then every person can do it in different way. May have different history, different story, different situation. Of course, my humble understanding is that th this may mean when we say the number of the ways towards Allah, the path towards Allah, the number equal to the number of people, means every person has way. No one is blocked. This is my understanding. But me, normally they say it means there is diversity. Khob. What we want to do, we don't want to get into m listing many, many ranks, which is maybe impossible to include everything. But, inshallah, in the next session you will see that we will mention some of the major uh, stations which relate to our discussion not about the whole uh, spiritual journey something very simple about our own discussion inshallah we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us appreciate the gift of salat and benefit from the spirituality of Salat and experience what awliyaullah used to experience in Salat even if it is a glimpse of it inshallah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin is there any question I have a question please yes um, Alaikum. Um, you mentioned about the the Hadda Tarakus and um, a wayfarer is a person who's managed to travel that certain distance. Mm -hmm. They've moved away from ego. So how how do we start that journey? You know, like um, what is the those initial steps are that like the hardest, I think. And how how do we start? Because we can't say when we start the journey we're a wayfarer, but how do we? Basically, how do we start that journey? So, inshallah, this is our topic. So, first, in ilm, in knowing, then in heart, then in seeing, and uh, you know, 
witnessing. So we will mention, inshallah, these things. But to give you at least a brief explanation, the very first point is to understand that we are selfish and self-centered and start to see others, start to allow other realities emerge and then among them see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the most important reality that gives reality to other things and his rights are the most important rights that give rights to others so first come out of our shell see the diversity in the world but then find the source of all the goodness because if I come out of myself and then I start worshiping for example my child or my I don't know friend or my tribe again this is a problem I have not really got rid of my ego so I have to come out of my shell but open my eyes and find the absolute beauty the absolute truth the absolute light and then in relation with that absolute truth and reality define other relations simple but it's not yes it is simple and difficult at the same time it's simple because we don't need to do miracles <laughs> but it's difficult in practice and our problem is that uh, we always look for something very complicated because you know I cannot accept that my problems are all because of something simple <laughs> yeah I want to say you know if I am not good it's because it's very difficult very complicated I don't have, you know, mentors, I don't have this, I don't have that. But the reality is that our problems are very simple. We have made it complicated. Yeah, imagine someone, for example, is not drinking water enough. Maybe it leads to lots of problems, even mentally, etc. If someone says, you know, just drink more water, he cannot accept. How can all these problems is because I don't drink, for example, water? Or if someone, for example, doesn't, you know, meet enough good people and has lots of problems, cannot accept that this can be a problem. Because we look for always something big to justify why I have problem. I think the first step is, is like looking inwards. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. Actually, we yeah. need only one step. I think I told you in uh, or some of you maybe have heard you know in some lectures that once masjid was you know crowded so the caretaker of masjid said may Allah's be mercy be upon whoever takes one step further means closer to the member pulpit then the speaker came down they said, you know, why are you coming down? He said, because whatever I wanted to say, he said in this sentence. May Allah's mercy be upon the one who takes one step further. What is that one step? Is to put your step on ego and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you put your step on ego and meet Allah, everything is sorted out. But... For this one step, we take, you know, decades. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we end with dua of Faraj. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma kulli waliyyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan. صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا 
ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أبلك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا ضمن علينا ورضا وهب لنا رافته ورحمته دعاء خيره اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اغض حوائنا ببركة الصلوات على محمد وآل محمد التماس دعاء